was a little over six years ago when I first came to this part of Thailand, this part of Bangkok, known as the Sukhumvit area. And it is here where I learned about the walk of shame. But so much has changed in six years. This, this perch I'm standing on didn't exist back then. This, this walkway that's connected to the BTS light rail system. This wasn't here, at least this section of it. So this is new. But what is kind of like the old days is the gridlock. The traffic is back. So yes, the intersection of uh, Soy 11, uh, Sukhumvit Road, and Soy 8, I can never figure out why that works that way, is gummed up nicely, like it was back in the days of old. And I'm standing here under the uh, light provided by Robert Ruggiero Fine Taylor, uh, because it's a good place to shoot. Uh, I have to be a little bit careful about where I point my camera from this point forward because there are people providing services that are not completely above board and uh, legal or at least ethical. But hey, let's give it a go and this is the walk of shame. The Monsoon restaurant would be our meeting place and I'm glad to see that that's still a thriving restaurant. They have good food. They're across the street from this new place, Rumors, which is a little bit noisy once things start going there. I like monsoon. I recommend it for anybody. I have a large selection of stuff there. Western, Mexican, pizza, local food, Thai food. Uh, a little bit uh, on the upscale side of prices, but it's worth it to have good service and good food. So we would uh, set out from monsoon, we being my friends and I, we would meet there and head off in this direction here. This is back toward the Sukhumvit Road traffic jam I just showed you. And head down this alleyway here. I have to be a little bit circumspect here because the, this place, uh, Lolita's, is a specialized kind of establishment. Uh, it's kind of where all hookers go to die. I don't know if they die, but it's uh, where they spend their uh, waning years. It's funny they call it Lolita's. Not a one of them is uh, under 40, and uh, they provide specialized services at a low price. Directly across from Low Leaders is a place to call now and called 8855. It was called something different back in the day. And um, this is where my friends and I would generally meet. There was a bar downstairs with, it was kind of a sports bar, friendly place. And on the floor upstairs, uh, they would have Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. Uh, just kind of a testament to the diversity of Bangkok, I suppose. You have, uh, get drunk on the ground floor, Go get your pipes cleaned at Lolita's and then uh, reform yourself and head upstairs, I suppose. Yeah, one theory. So where I'm standing, if you if you look from down on the Soy 8 uh, place where I entered the alleyway, you would think that this is the end of the alleyway. But no, you would be wrong. There is this little passageway here that kind of zigzags into another passageway over there. Now I have to shut the camera down because immediately to my left is yet another one of those specialized establishments. It's early in the evening and the sun is just a setting, which is a good thing for, for me because, you know, the uh, specialized establishment behind me, they're not out in full regalia yet. They would be sitting out front saying, hello, you handsome man, kind of thing. Um, as you passed by. Again, I don't want to get up close with the camera to these people. It's kind of rude, but I do want to show my viewers the walk of shame. So that's kind of the beginning of it. Now, as you turn around and walk down this alleyway, this is a safe alleyway for a camera because there's not much in the way of, uh, of naughty goings on on this alleyway. This is just a, a connector pathway to uh, a den of naughtiness. So I entered the connector pathway way down there on Soy 8 and walked my way down to Soy 4. Whereupon reaching the intersection of connector passageway and Soy 4, make a right. And head off into the infamous Nana Plaza. I am seeking out places such as this 
to provide a little light. <laughs> this is not the best low light camera in the world, so that's uh, so why I'm standing in front of uh, the, the sign for, what is it, the uh, uh, Motel. A nice big bright light here. Now, I'm not going to be able to be too conspicuous with my camera work going forward because we're walking into the first stop in the Walk of Shame, which is Nana Plaza. I'll do my best to get you some, some footage. I'll bet you thought you had to go to California to get a California ink tattoo. Well, no, you'd be wrong. I used to come for lunch when I lived in this neighborhood here at Hooters. It's a pleasant overpriced place, but I still kind of like it. You, know, you can get a decent burger. And here the waitresses are very friendly. And they're all dressed up like Hooters girls and it is directly across the street from the infamous Nana Plaza. So this is the inside of Nana Plaza, and I thought coming here early, it's, you know, like just past sunset, would be a disadvantage. But it turns out that it's an advantage for being able to shoot at least a little bit of video, because once this place gets hopping and all the girls are outside and scantily dressed trying to attract in customers, they don't want people like me poking a camera at them. And I can understand that, so at least I'm getting some footage of the inside of Nana Plaza. As I walk by all of these bars and establishments and look inside, there are, you know, lots and lots of girls dressed in bikinis and other provocative stuff, hunched over their iPhones waiting for customers to show up. But yeah, stop number one on the walk of shame, Nana Plaza. Exit Nana Plaza by uh, walking out and making a right-hand turn on Soy 4, heading back towards Sukhumvit Road. At Soy 4 and Sukhumvit, the intersection of said roadways, you'll find a uh, little police booth here that narrows down the walkway considerably. And when it's crowded here in high season, uh, the, you know, it just gets pretty jammed up which I think that this retailer is very happy about. Slows people down to look at his or her collection of stuff. Looks like they have a, a general theme of stuff here. Sexy dresses. After making a right-hand turn on Sukhumvit Road at the uh, police booth and the establishment, the merchant's establishment of cheap, sexy dresses, and walk for about five minutes, you'll find yourself back at Soy 8 in Sukhumwit, where we began our journey on the Walk of Shame. Now, I have an executive decision to make, you see, because this walkway that I'm walking along now has um, been erected uh, since my original days on the Walk of Shame. And what this does is it makes walking easier. I'm headed off to Asok, which is the next stop. I, I came into this walkway from the Nana station of the BTS. Now you could just climb on the BTS for one stop and go to our so if you'd like to, but then it would no longer be a walk of shame. So I'm walking, and what I have to decide is if I'm going to stay up here on this lovely walkway, that certainly makes the whole thing a little bit better, or will I head down to uh, Sukhumwit Road, which is kind of a basic element of the Walk of Shame because of all the street merchants. You have to jostle your way through the crowded sidewalks of Sukhumwit Road because back when I did the Walk of Shame, it was jammed with merchants. Now they chased all the merchants away, but then COVID happened and many of the merchants came back. And I could also see that I made a mistake in presuming that this walkway went all the way to a soak, it does not. So, it's not an executive decision after all. The lack of an elevated walkway made the decision for me. Down we go. So back here at the sidewalk level, uh, you can see a merchant over there, a sidewalk merchant. And actually, I'm very confused by those sidewalk merchants, or that particular sidewalk merchant, because it's the only place you're going to see the stuff that they're offering. They are offering knockoff uh, Cialis and Viagra. That's one of their more prominent displays. They sell knives and other things that would be considered weapons and sex toys, all of which are illegal in Bangkok and you don't see them anywhere else. So I've often wondered when I pass that particular merchant, why it is that they're permitted to get away with it? It's a rhetorical question. I know the answer to it. 
they're just paying the right people giving them a piece of the action oh by the way see alice and viagra if you want to get that don't buy it there just go to a pharmacy they sell it over the counter a more legit merchant selling fruit and vegetables and i just passed the african boys they're back i don't know what their gig is but there's always a collection of africans at that particular location and you know they're not intrusive event or anything they just kind of sit there um I suspect they have a mission of some sort. I'm just stumped as to what it is. Uh, because if you want to go meet up with some Africans, that'd be the place to do it. See, now the merchant situation is is uh, not what it once was. There are a few people on the sidewalk, but these you could barely walk here when I was here six years ago. It was really crowded. Now, this uh, particular hotel is, uh, I'm told, one of the oldest brothels in Bangkok. I don't know how, how, if they keep records of that kind of thing, but it's been there a long time, apparently. So there are, you know, some merchants back here. This particular stretch of Sukhumvit sidewalk seems to have more than others. Oh, we have belts here. That's nice. I actually purchased a wallet from one of these guys that I still have. It's held up quite nicely. More fruit. So yeah, the merchants are back and selective places, so it seems. I don't know what the deal is with that. Hello. Oh yeah, this this feels like the old Sukhumvit. You know, a lot, a lot of people passing by, merchants crowding the sidewalk. Now you get varied opinions on whether this is a good or a bad thing. Certainly, the merchants think it's a good thing. Um, but there are a lot of people that know Bangkok for its crowded sidewalks of merchants, and they're kind of okay with that. So we're approaching the Asok area. So if you took the uh, walkway, the upper walkway, you would come down here. This is the Asok station of the BTS. Or if you walked along the crowded sidewalk of merchants, you would have been walking along there. Either way, it's going to bring you to this little plaza that is, uh, I guess a good landmark is a Pala. Pala restaurant is in the corner of the little plaza. And it's a good Italian restaurant if you like Italian food. They do a good job. And come here to the moving stairs that will take you down, which follow the signs the MRT, that's the underground rail system. Now we're not going to be getting on the underground rail system, we're just using this passageway. So you'll come down the escalator there and onto this uh, underground plaza, which uh, if you would to make a left turn, you would head down to the MRT station. But we're going to go up this way, we're just using this passageway to cross the Asok Roadway, which is a very busy roadway, and this is an easier way to do it. Also, I get to show you this particular crazy thing about Bangkok. Now, it's not too crowded here. I've seen it much more crowded at this interchange. Up there is the BTS rail system. Down there is the MRT system. And the escalators, the moving stairs, are on opposite side. The down escalator on this side is on the left. The down escalator on from the BTS level is on the right. So that means this stream of traffic has to cross one another, which makes absolutely no sense. Now, you can't see the chaotic craziness that it causes because it's not that crowded. But if two trains came in at the same time during rush hour, this plaza is a maddening mishmash of people trying to cross one another because of the way the stupid escalators are arranged. In New York, there would be fist fights every 20 minutes on a slow day. Stop number two on the Walk of Shame. Soy Cowboy, translated to Cowboy Street. Yet another location where it's not really cool to be pointing a camera, so I'll do the best I can. Uh, Soy Cowboy, it's a collection of bars and restaurants and brothels. And, uh, the main activity here is you go to a bar, you sit down, buy a drink, a girl will come and snuggle up next to you. You can buy her a drink and she'll snuggle a little more. And maybe that's all she'll do. Or maybe for the right price, she'll go elsewhere with you and provide more in-depth services. It varies from place to place. 
Just ask. I'll let you know. So here I am at the other end of Soy Cowboy. It's an interesting walk, even if you're not interested in the services. And this is new, this sign. Well, cowboy being stop number two. Stop number three would be Crazy House. And this sign was never here before, but clearly they want you to know that they're still here. I'm gonna go across the street to take a few shots of Crazy House. So there is the end of Soy Cowboy on uh, where it intersects with Soy 23. And just a short walk to your right coming out of Soy Cowboy is Crazy House. And Crazy House is the denouement, the piece de resistance on the Walk of Shame. And you gotta stop in, even if you're not interested in playing the game, just to see it because it's quite a spectacle. If you go inside there, where I'm not even going to attempt to take my camera out of my pocket, there is a stage at about eye level. And upon said, said stage are, I don't know, half a dozen brass poles and about 50 dancers wearing lipstick and high heels, bouncing around to music. They do have a number attached to them as well, so you can request them for services other than dancing. But yeah. Just walking in there when it's busy and the stage is full of naked bimbos jiggling around, it's quite a spectacle to behold. And so, yeah, that would be stop number three and the final denouement of the Walk of Shame.